first of all, we will show you a little video. Um, we have um, analyzed 12 cases on behalf of ESHA. Now you can probably try it again while I'm speaking. And um, uh, ECHO, uh, the partner responsible for analysis, um, has uh, chosen uh, no bet kit for more in-depth analysis. Um, this is what we will show a little image film of. You will see a little video of five minutes. And after that, uh, we are going to have uh, the presentation of uh, Andrea Gruber, who is um, the manager of this project, No Bad Kids. There we go. Video starts now. The school supports positive behavior and rewards this. The school has just started the system in September. But how do the students experience it? And do they see any improvement since they've started this program? Well, actually it helps. It motivates children to... to there shouldn't be that much trouble. Because, well, there were a lot of fights and, well, it motivates the children to be good. And whoever gets the points can buy a t-shirt and, for example, go to the Dobro shop and buy whatever if he collects the points. And actually it motivates them to be good more often, not to cause trouble. And now, well, the school starts to get better now that this Dobra came. Well, this Dobra program is that well for example everybody has individual goals for example mine is that i only speak with permission and if we meet it we get 10 points on each class 10 dagra 10 points and it slowly aggregates and if we do something the teacher defines how much reward he gives to us and it adds up and we always write it on the board that who has how many points and on thursday we have the shopping day everybody goes up and looks for something he fancies well, sometimes it does not work out because we do not ask for permission to speak, we do not put our hands up and we interrupt, we still have to practice it. Well, the children are more hardworking and in the discussion circles they can tell about their complaints and if, for example, the teacher can help. For example, last year, when there were no discussion circles yet, he could not tell it, but here he can. So, the students experience it in a very positive way. But does the program also show improvements in data like absences? And why did the school opt for the No Bad Kid project? We asked the head of the school. We have 124 students at the school currently, out of that more than 50% is socially disadvantaged or are living with multiple disadvantages and more than 60% are struggling with learning or behavioural disorders. On the long term for sure, I would like my children to become successful adults, an adult that finds his place in the big world, and last but not least, to have a vocation, a profession in their hand that is actually useful because they do not have a lot of good examples in front of them from their close environment and I would like to help them so they can become full force members of the society. So far, the program has made our teachers, without exceptions, to see the children, regardless of the environment they come from, the issues they have and what they bring with themselves. Every day, with the discussion circles, we manage to create a trustful relationship that makes the children open up and ask for help. Both in the long and short term, we have goals that we would like to achieve. For example, decreasing the rates of absentees. I can prove it with statistical data that compared to the last semester, the children missed less classes, which also shows that they enjoy the program, and if for nothing else, they come here because they get something extra that they have not got before. There are already some results to be seen at the school since they've started this program. But this project takes a lot of time and effort in order to see true results. We asked Salty, a former beneficiary of the project, where he is now and how the program has helped him. 
So, my secondary school years were very difficult. There was a terrible relationship between me and my teachers because I did not agree in many things with them or with my environment. I often made my different opinion clear and I did not pay enough attention so when they tried to discipline me, I still had the upper hand. This went so out of control that it happened that I threatened the teacher, I just simply skipped classes. This also showed in my scholastic record, I barely passed classes, I almost failed. And on occasion like that, I have got to know the program like. And it was very interesting to me, because when I first saw the methodology, I thought that I got into a crowd of idiots. I did not understand at all why they are doing this and why is it good for them, why is it good for me, why would that make me better. I hated talking to other people outside of the ones I knew. I was listening to music, but there instead of judging me or starting to mock me because of it, they nodded me and they tried to open towards me until I was ready to do the same. In this program it happened to me for the first time that they recognized that I exist and I'm capable of doing things. They encouraged me to start talking about my thoughts, they accepted my ideas or at least they thought about it. Currently I study regularly everything that is needed to matriculate again, to have enough points for the admission. Meanwhile, I study for myself programming in a self-taught way to increase my value in the labor market. It's clear that the Thank you. Um, this was a teaser to the program uh, No Bad Kids, uh, operated by Presley Rich uh, Foundation Hungary. And um, first of all, before I give the floor to Andrea Gruber, who is uh, the head of the program, I would like to try the second poll. Um, which is a very simple question, whether you uh, work with children who have disturbing behavior or it's not relevant for you uh, personally. If we can share it, let's do that. Great. And um, while we are waiting for the poll results, uh, I will ask Andrea to tell us a little bit more about this long time that is necessary that was mentioned by both uh, uh, the former beneficiary and uh, the school head and what these things uh, mean what is Dobra um, how this whole program works and why do you believe that this is a good way of including students in education in general uh, good afternoon everyone uh, I hope the backlight doesn't disturb you too much um, but um, welcome from Hungary and today I would like to tell you a little more about our program and then about the continuum that we were, that the kids in the program experience and then also about the continuum the teachers experience in the program. Um, and uh, hopefully then you will have a lot of questions so we can, uh, we can discuss those. Uh, I really don't want to talk too much uh, but I'd rather have your questions. So if you have anything that comes up, please type in and we, I try to address those. But basically, um, well, this one is worse, I'm sorry. Okay. So basically, uh, the No Bad Kids program is a behavior management system, which we also call, um, often call, um, life skills programs programs because we teach kids with serious behavioral issues uh, the essential skills that they need to be successful in life um, or, or very specifically successful in the communities they exist whether it's the family the school or the living environment and um, typically we worked with kids that we term troubled and troubling kids which is very important um, because we don't see problem kids. We, we instead, we see kids who have problems and who are expressing their need for help and support in ways that are disturbing others. So basically, um, we don't look at the, um, we don't consider or focus on the on the roots of their problems but instead we work with the behavior and we focus on their strength and what they can uh, they can bring to the table um, it is a very complex 
complex system, or we call it a system of methodologies that we apply, but we basically say that the behavior is a symptom of something, um, something more, um, some unmet need in the kids. And basically what the program does is create a net around these kids so that they can experience success in small ways and then experience success in bigger ways and in that process change their behaviors. So let me just try to give you a list of, of the, the various methodologies and approaches and systems pieces that are necessary in this program. First of all, um, again, as the principal or the school head in the video said, you know, we believe that there are no such kid, there are no bad kids, but kids who are misunderstood and who need more support. And basically we we'll try to look behind the behavior and see the kid um, in those in those in those youngsters who exhibit threat sometimes threatening behaviors. And once we got past the behavior, we start looking for those needs that are unmet in the case of the kids, and then we start teaching pro-social skills for them. So uh, we use a lot of experiential learning approaches. Uh, experiential education is basically one of the one of the key methodologies that we apply in all sorts of situations. Uh, we also use group process, which is basically um, a method for the teacher to manage the group so that the kids are able to, to, to give feedback on individual behavior so the group basically becomes able to manage the individual behaviors in themselves. This takes a different approach from the teacher, being from an authority figure, more being a facilitator uh, of the learning process. Um, and then um, we have to emphasize that teachers and all the adults who work with the kids have to form a team uh, because uh, in our system that unfortunately is often not the case, uh, that teachers work together in, um, in order to, to support one or, 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 or another child. Um, we also use... Um, of obviously um, therapists in this process, but we try to put the relationship, the teacher's relationship with the therapist on a more partnering basis. So we don't wait for the therapeutic hour, as we say, uh, because we believe that the, the adult who spends the longest time with the kids on a daily basis has um, the most impact on the kids. So the teachers, or, and the parents has to be have to be in charge and have to be able to make um, treatment decisions that are supporting the kids. We also partner. We create a partnership between the teachers and the parents, um, and we believe that uh, a parent is his or her her child's best expert. So we really need to move um, the relationship, the teacher's relationship with the teachers from being, again, an authority figure to more a partnering one and enroll the parents as, um, as um, a champion for their child. Um, and often when we see families where um, uh, there is a certain culture, uh, which often includes aggression or, or um, loud, loud speaking that might seem threatening and it might tell us that they don't really care about their kids. But in, in reality, it is even an, even an, an abusive parent wants the best for their, for their child. So uh, hard as it is to believe, it is the case. So we believe that, that, that you know, we can find in that relationship something that can support the child. Um, what else? We also believe that the, the professional in human services and in our work, it's the teacher, the adult, who's, who is the intervention. And that means that we can have really good methodologies and we can have really um, 
really um, evidence supported or evidence based practices, it won't work if the personality and the approaches and the behavior of the teacher is not right. So um, that's that's a key piece of our our uh, methodology or uh, or principles and uh, basically um, we have been working in hungary for for over 15 years now and uh, what we do is we go into schools just like the one you have seen in the in the video uh, in which they typically have serious issues with behavior kids are aggressive hurting each other or sometimes hurting the teachers and the adults and we start working with the adults in this in these uh, schools and slowly um, change the culture of the institution um, from um, from struggling with the kids to more towards more a partnership with the kids in which the behavior uh, doesn't um, get in the way of the learning success and basically um, with the kids who get in our programs like as like Jolti who you have seen in the video he has spent uh, about six years in our programs and um, he went through a continuum of, of uh, various um, I should say services to him so first he was really an aggressive kid um, and he's a smart kid so he knew how to break up the group the group and how to prevent us from doing our job and how to prevent us from from the group to have a successful meeting um, so the first step was to to work with him and his peers to manage the aggressive behavior um, Jolti was very he wasn't physically aggressive but verbally he was he was very um yes he was really hard to handle and and because of that it was really hard to get along with him so we had to get past that phase so we used um, the approaches to manage the behavior um, and then once uh, it takes about six months to, in a group of kids to actually get past the behavior and establish um, a system in which they can um, actually function in a in a group in a more productive way and that is small steps so it basically means that we want to have a group meeting in a circle and to be or complete one game or activity with them before we can we can fully dedicate a session to and complete a game or or an activity it takes about six months um, and until then we have to come back and try again and do it again and and you know the next meeting is is always a new beginning so we we push this and then eventually the kids um, realize that in this in in this environment they are valued they are um, uh, they are wanted and their behavior doesn't doesn't block their successes and so once we get past that and we can um, have the group spend one session in a circle or, or just complete an activity together we start teaching the pro-social skills and this is where we use a lot of experiential education activities it's basically teaching um, them about the relationship their relationships towards them or with themselves relationships with others how to operate in a group problem solving communication skills um, and so on and this um, depending on the kids takes at least a year year and a half before we can say that they they actually learned how to uh, successfully operate in, in groups and then with the kids uh, especially with the kids who exhibit leadership skills you know we start working on them so we start start helping them and and working with them on on being independent and taking leadership in their own lives in the group um, so we let them experience uh, themselves in various um, various um, activities in which they take the lead and then once that's done 
we actually um, start working with them on transitioning to independent living. And that basically means that we start focusing on the environment around them and uh, teach them how to navigate the terrain. So how you go to the authorities and, and renew your ID card, how to, uh, how you go to the authority and get, um, get the financial support that you are entitled to. And once um, that is, um, you know, they can, they can manage that, and uh, then we start mentoring them individually um, as they start their independent life. And uh, Jolti is in that phase right now. So he has moved away from the village where he was born and raised. And now he lives in the capital of Hungary. And he, is, um, he decided to retake his uh, matriculation exam so that he has better results. So he's, uh, it's coming up in May. And he is also going to apply for university. And this has been um, six years of work, and he is still he still needs a lot of support to actually be able or be to be able to be included in society in the bigger sense. So this is basically the process the kids go through, you know, managing themselves and then managing in a group, and then with the leadership skills, we say managing others. Uh, and then managing the system and finally managing their lives, their lives to a success. And um, the teachers, when we start um, working in a school, the teachers basically go through a very similar continuum. Uh, they um, first, we start working with them on managing their thoughts and attitudes towards the kids. So we have them, because you know when you when you experience aggression and threatening behavior on a daily basis in big volumes then you feel helpless you feel you feel threatened you are you are afraid of these kids often so we we um we first we show them that they um that these kids are not problem kids but these are kids who have problems and once they understand that we we move move on and we teach them skills to manage the behavior of the kids and then we um, we help them to become independent in making treatment decisions so that they don't wait for the school head to to decide on punishment or to to manage the kids who are the most um, most aggressive but we have the teachers to be able to handle most of these situations or to be able to ask for help, but we basically put them into the decision-making making position. And then um, we actually help them, coach them for two, three years to actually be able to, to apply the methodologies and the new behaviors that they learn. And I think I will stop here. Um, and hopefully you will have some questions um, at the towards the end, because I think my time is up. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, I don't know whether it was too much for uh, people, but probably it was a good teaser. Uh, if you have any questions, you can um, still collect them, and uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end. Um, I had just one question um, because uh, the boy who is still in the program uh, was uh, not saying no bad kid program, but he said that he participates in the Dabra program. Can you say what that was? Uh, why did he say that? I know, but it, we didn't show that part of the film. Uh, yes, uh, because um, the way we work with the schools and the way we work with the kids is that basically let them decide on um, on. Um, on their own operating systems, whatever that means. And in the school's case, in this particular school's case, it means that they, we have we, we showed them the model for the behavior management system, but they actually developed their own system. So in that particular school, the points, the school money that the kids collect is called Dabra. 
and they have a they have a theme they um, the kids are um, the kids are collecting their points and as they show as their behavior improves, they are making, they are moving towards becoming a magician. That's their, that's this school's system. Thank you. Um, listening to uh, the presentation and watching the film, uh, you probably have a first impression whether you think that this such a such a program, although it needs a very long time commitment, would work in your own environment. There is another poll on that. If it works, you will see, yeah. And uh, I think while we are waiting for uh, the results, we can already introduce the next speaker.